Now that we have calibrated both the speakers, we can move on to the other features. One of the most interesting features of the Loud Precision is that they can have multiple voices, meaning that they can actually sound if they were different kind of speakers. Uh, we call them voices, meaning that uh, you can select the way the monitor will sound by selecting one of these elements here. As you can see, you have the possibility to select among four main voices for the precisions that are called precision, comfort, high frequency presence and wide dispersion, plus a number of studio monitors. The voices can be selected from this menu here, and you can see you have four main precision voices. One is called precision, that is the most neutral, transparent and uh, precise one. And then you have comfort, which is a curve that is actually most suitable for very long sessions because it has a sort of less fatiguing uh, character to it, still being very focused and very precise. And then you have a frequency, high frequency presence that is useful for those kind of users that are uh, preferring slightly brighter monitors to avoid making the program over bright. And then you have white dispersion. White dispersion is a very specific voice of the monitor that uh, are increasing the vertical dispersion of the monitors uh, by approximately 20 degrees in vertical. This can be very useful in uh, all the situations where maybe you have your monitors at your hearing level when you are sitting, but you have people standing beside you and you want them to hear the same uh, level of balance that you are hearing. So this uh, setting here uh, is making the monitor slightly less uh, flat and precise, but with a lot wider dispersion. It's very useful in, in many cases, especially when the room has a nice kind of little reverberation, because this wide dispersion mode is, of course, triggering the room a little bit more. And so what comes back from the room uh, is sort of richer kind of sound. So in addition to the main four voices that we have just discussed, we have three groups of additional ones. Uh, the first uh, one is called Studio Monitors, uh, where we list a number of emulations of industry standard studio monitors. This is very useful because it allows for uh, having different perspectives on the sound, exactly as if you were using more than one pair of speakers at the time on your console. So this is possible to compare and make A-B uh, comparison on the sound with just one pair of speakers. There are a number of speakers here, and they are all emulated in both magnitude and phase response. In addition to studio monitors, we also have a bunch of Hi-Fi uh, speakers. These are, of course, less neutral than studio monitors and are providing uh, the typical experience of uh, um, an high-quality home system. Plus, a few entries in the multimedia sections that are including a standard TV, Bluetooth speakers and a smartphone. Uh, all of these options are very useful to compare your material and do, uh, quickly do A-B comparisons to understand how the material is going to sound like on different systems. Of course, the speaker simulation is taking into account the frequency and phase response. Therefore, it is very useful for A-B comparisons and for having a different perspective on the material. Uh, but it's not emulating the physical aspects of the original speaker, as for example, maximum SPL, distortion or dispersion in the room. When uh, selecting voices here, it's very handy to see the frequency response of the target system uh, from the arc uh, graph. For example, if I now turn off the before curve, I see the final frequency response of the system that is pretty much flat because the system is calibrated. And if I switch the voice to another um, speaker, so for example, selecting the famous white cones uh, small speakers, then you can see the frequency response of the target uh, voice. Or for example, the smartphone. 